Welcome to the TRG Podcast, everyone. This is the podcast where we discuss all matters of relationships that people are suffering from. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to podcast number four. My name is TRG, the Relationship Guru. Today, we have two very special guests, uh, two very good friends of mine, Pablo and Yuko. You want to say hi? Hi, I am Pablo. Yuko's a little bit shy, <laughs> but she's super <laughs> brave for being on the podcast, so we're super grateful for her being here. Uh, today's podcast topic is going to be interracial relationships and tearing down cultural barriers. So, you know, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, so I guess the first question, Pablo and Yuko, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourselves and your backgrounds, where you're from, you know, that kind of stuff? No problem. I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start. So uh, my name is Pablo. I am uh, originally from Chile, South America, and, um, and yeah, I'm 36, and I've been living uh, outside of uh, Chile for about around 10 years or so. But wow. uh, but yeah, awesome. Uh, what about yourself, Yuko? Hi, my name is Yuko. I'm from Japan. I'm 33 years old and I live in, in Canada for almost seven years. Around seven years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, I think all listeners would like to know, how did you guys two meet? <laughs> we met... Long story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know the story. <laughs> they don't know Let's the start story. from the beginning. Uh, makes sense. So we met, um, we met in 2012, 12. actually. So that's uh, nine years ago, and uh, we met in Australia, um, in Melbourne. So um, we were introduced by a friend, uh, my housemate and a uh, Yuko's friend. <laughs> and uh, we met at a Spanish festival, you know, it was kind of this like uh, street festival. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's, that's where kind of everything started, you know. Um, it was a very casual kind of a meeting, you know, and it, it wasn't any sort of like blind date or anything like that, actually. Um, so, yeah, that, that's where everything started in Australia. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, what were you two doing in Australia? Why were you there? Were you studying or were you working? Yeah, just just like uh, traveling, really. Um, I was there on a work on holiday visa. Um, same with Yuko. When she arrived, she arrived also to spend about a year there, you know, learn English. Mm -hmm. kind of explore a different culture um not really like with a very specific uh goal in mind you know um mm -hmm. i think we were both kind of in the same mood in that sense we were just living day one day, one day at a time traveling you know trying to absorb a different culture actually okay. funny thing when, when we met with yuko um i was already for about a year in australia when i met her and she was like just a week. Just, just, a, just week. a week. Just a week since I arrived. Literally right off the plane, right? Like, yeah. And, literally. Uh, I went to Australia to learn English, so I didn't really speak much at the time. Mm -hmm. So I think when I met Pablo, he was, I think, second person that I met, like as a friend, since I arrived. Arrived, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. Um, Actually, when we met, um, even though uh, I I like her pretty much right away, um, but I, being totally honest, I barely said anything more than hello, and then I disappeared. I I, I was like uh, a obsessed with getting South American food that day, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't pay much attention at the beginning, and I think she did not either. You know, we just like yeah. said hi, and and that's it. It wasn't like. Uh, immediate thing you know like oh we fell in love right away T to be honest no mm -hmm. um but yeah that that's how everything started like fr from then onwards really um it's just uh, <laughs> a chain of um coincidences and, and nice events that well led to uh to a long very long-term relationship at the end that's amazing. Um, on a side note, uh, I, I do want to say to listeners out there, um, uh, myself, Yuko and Pablo, we frequently go to dinner 
and like Yuko, your English is amazing, honestly. Thank you. Like I, I obviously don't know anything about Japanese. <laughs> like I don't know the Japanese language whatsoever, so I communicate with her on a on a routine basis. So. Uh, you had you had me fooled if you went to Australia to learn English. I think it's like very fluent. Yeah, I mean, and, and respectfully, but learning English from Australians, it's uh, it's like a little bit of an extra challenge, you know, like yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the accent, the <laughs> heavy accent yeah. and everything, right? Yeah, and, and and especially like in Melbourne, you you interact with people from everywhere, right? Like it's a very mm -hmm. cosmopolitan city, so I think that. Um, I think that it's a great place, honestly, to learn English because you're going to have to deal with so many different accents, you know, like uh, a lot of people from India, a lot of people from from uh, England, South Americans like myself, a lot of Asians. So, like, I, I think it's a great place to learn English and I kind of agree with you. I, I think your English is really good. Thank yeah, you. it's amazing. Good. <laughs> yeah. I know she won't take credit for it, but uh, no. she's very humble uh, for listeners out there. But yeah, uh, it's great. And um, so thank you very much for sharing that with me, guys. Are you guys still friends with the two people that have introduced you to? Well, we haven't seen the friend that introduced us in a long time, okay. but um, we're still friends. We still keep in touch, you know, um, every once in a while. We still in close contact with many of the friends that were around uh, by then. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, um, my best friend at the time, uh, which was my housemate, not the one that introduces, but a different one, mm -hmm. also met um, a girl and, and a girl that was also from Asia, but she was from uh, she is from a uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they started dating pretty much at the same time as us and mm -hmm. uh they actually they still together you know they, oh, they wow. face pretty much the same challenges and uh they also made it so that, that's a funny story and, and we're still obviously in very close contact with them um but it's hard you know once once you move uh, when you're traveling and you move somewhere else it's really hard to remain you know close um mm -hmm. it takes an effort that we don't always do as good as we should um but yeah I guess piggybacking off of that, and that's very interesting about your friends that they're still together. Are they still in Australia? No, they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. live in Melbourne. Um, oh wow, they're still there. That's crazy. They're still there, but they're moving. They're they're thinking about moving in about a year uh, to Vancouver, actually, where oh, we live. Wow. Okay. So it's going to be an interesting reunion nine years later. Um, they're actually going to have a baby. Uh, oh wow. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, they're they're going for the full the full package. <laughs> Congratulations to them. That's that's amazing. So very it's, exciting. Uh, yeah, it's super exciting, Absolutely. and it's uh, good that they're still together and and they're uh, hanging in strong and they're planning to come over here, which is really cool. At least they'll know someone here, which is great, right? Yeah, and and it's also well a very interracial relationship, right? Like he's Canadian, she's from Indonesia, mm -hmm. so like a very very interesting relationship too. So. I'm curious, when you two traveled to Australia, did you guys go there completely alone? Like, did you know anyone there? Um, did you know your roommate before that? Or Yuko, did you know your roommate before that? I had only one friend, mm -hmm. but not living there. Like, actually, I had a friend that, oh, I have a friend that I don't know. Okay. He actually recommended to me to meet the person. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know anybody there. Kind of, oh, wow. kind of a friend. Yeah, kind of friend of friend. Yeah, actually, pretty brave, uh, Yuko. I just uh, booked a flight ticket mm -hmm. and one week of hostel, and that's it. Just just flew there, no plan. Oh, wow. No plan. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, is it common? I, like, did you go, I guess, how long were you in Australia, Yuko, Pablo? Well, I I ended up spending there almost three, like two and a half years. Um, oh, wow. You were there for about one year, one and, year and three a few months. months. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And um, we both arrived there um, with no network. Uh, but just there was an overlap, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, like I was there a year earlier. So when she arrived, I already had um, a bunch of friends and a, and a place. Actually, that, that kind of played an important role in how our relationship developed because um, 
I was lucky enough to offer Yuko, you know, to join us uh, mm -hmm. in our house as a housemate, you know, mm -hmm. to, to have to also, when you know, join join us in the house. And um, I think that that was obviously a very important factor mm -hmm. in us uh, being able to, you know, uh, uh, get into an, uh, in a relationship. You know, we spend a lot of time together. Like, I think that without that, I don't know, I don't know if I would have had uh, so many instances, you know, to, to get to know her well and, and obviously for her to get to know me. So I think that the whole housing situation definitely helped, you know. Um, the same, same for pretty much all my friends um, that are in, uh, in the, <laughs> they, it, it always starts pretty much like that, like with a share house or, or, or housemates, you know. It's, uh, wow. I think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I really believe in like serendipity, uh, fate, like things happen for a reason. And uh, I, I just find your particular story and, and many people's stories very unique because you, Pablo, you came from halfway across the world, really, right? Like, I mean, from, oh, yeah. from South America all the way landed to Australia in Melbourne, like that exact city, like you probably could have picked any city to settle, kind of settle in for those two and a half years, like it could be Brisbane, Sydney, Gold Coast, wherever, you know, you name it. And you decided to kind of settle there. And then Yuko yourself, you know, like you went to Australia and of all cities, you picked Melbourne and you guys ended up in kind of like, you know, friends with friends of each other, right? To get introduced to each other. So I think that's, that's amazing. It is, it is like it, we are culturally, our cultural backgrounds are probably as different as it gets. You yeah. know, like, like not many things in common between the Chilean culture and the Japanese culture, you know, just maybe that we're both facing the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, that's it. Uh, the rest is all different. Yeah, that's, um, do you find, I, I guess uh, maybe we, we can talk about that a little bit uh, and dive into that because that's obviously part of the subject matter of what we're talking about today. Um, do you find that that's become challenging for you two in your relationship, like navigating that? Or has it benefited you? Like, has that been a good thing that you guys are come from two different worlds kind of thing? I see a lot of value. On that mm -hmm. personally, I don't know. I don't know, Yuko. How, how do you feel about the fact that we come from very different cultures? Like, do do you think that has helped, or you think it has made it more difficult? Both well, it difficult in the beginning, mm. but then if you respect each other, it doesn't matter if you're from Chile, Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we yeah. both happen to be very open-minded into realizing. First of all, acknowledging you know that um there is different the differences culturally speaking something as simple as hugging as you know grabbing uh grabbing yuko's arm or hand in japan that's extremely uncommon until right. you're quite advanced you know in a mm -hmm. in a relationship when in chile if you met a stranger in chile female or or if, if, let's say I, i'm meeting a a, a girl and I have absolutely no feelings for her, but when you say hello, you're gonna kiss her in the in the cheek. It's right. it's just absolutely common. It's a common uh, greeting, right? Yeah, it is. It is, and you kind of hug the person. Uh, but in Japan, not a chance. You know, I think I I think I have hugged Yuko's parents in probably occasions that I can count with one hand. You know, and, and it's not because I don't want to. It's not because mm -hmm. they don't want to. It's just not um so to to answer your question i think it worked or i think it has worked until now because we both respect a lot each other's culture mm -hmm. like I, I have a, a a real admiration for japanese culture right um and we have been very lucky that we have lived also always in a third country where a different culture to both of us so that's that also helps because we have both adapt to something else you know it's not that I needed to adapt completely to the Japanese culture or the other way around. I think it probably also helps that you're both incredibly open-minded people, 
Um, of and I mean, like, not only you've traveled the world, but I think that you're just, um, like, just speaking with you two over the last couple months that we've known each other or whatever, you're very open-minded to kind of new experiences, new cultures, new cuisines, of course, that, <laughs> you know, we frequent. And, um, yeah, I, I think that you, the approach, you know, no matter what culture you're coming from is important, right? Like, if you have that uh i think hugo's right right like if you have respect for another culture you know it doesn't matter where you're from like you're going to want to like hey like teach me about this like let me learn about this kind of thing like would you guys agree with that a hundred percent i i think it's all about a balance of like um you know certain aspects of your culture you're not really easily gonna give away like mm -hmm. uh and and you gotta understand the same on the other side too you know, like I cannot expect Yuko to wear shoes inside the house, you know, mm -hmm. just so Yuko probably cannot expect me to not give her a hug when mm -hmm. I haven't seen her all day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's you make those little concessions, culturally speaking. But in order to achieve that, you, you need to have a real interest also in uh, in making it work. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen automatically. No, no matter how open-minded you are, you, you have to kind of, especially at the beginning, you need to remind yourself like, hey, uh, I have to kind of be flexible, you know, both in what I want and both on, on in what, I, what I'm willing to give away because um, honestly, that's the only way. A lot of sacrifice. Yeah, right? you, gotta, of, you gotta be willing. Uh, kind of push and pull, right? Compromise yeah. um, between two parties. Yeah, no, I can I can completely imagine that. Um, Yuko, I, I, uh, I wanted to ask, when you went to Australia, was your intention to be there for a year and a half or were you just planning to like, hey, let's, let's kind of visit Australia for a little bit and let's see how it goes and then yeah, we'll figure it out. My plan then. was just, I had $10,000. I mm -hmm. saved all the time when I was working in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, like my plan was just learn English by myself, not mm -hmm. to go to school and meeting new people, learn a culture and after one year, go home. <laughs> that was my <laughs> plan, really. Like I just working so hard in Japan mm -hmm. and over time, every day. So I just wanted to be free and I, wa I wanted to see different world. Mm -hmm. So just like I decided myself, okay, one year I take my time and going back home after that <laughs> interesting interesting and then obviously eventually you did go back home because i am assuming because you were there for a year and a half right and pablo was there for two and a half years is that correct yeah so uh <laughs> that's funny our um our intention was to stay a little bit longer in australia mm -hmm. It just happened that um, immigration was at the time, and I think probably still very complicated in Australia. Um, it wasn't an easy task to get an extension on our working visas and it just didn't work, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, th that was kind of a, a, a bucket of, of cold water, to be honest, because uh, it was something that was almost guaranteed the way we did it. We did it the proper way, you know, lawyer, um, an employer involved and everything. And it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So then we obviously, I had to leave actually mm -hmm. earlier than her, uh, oh, believe wow. it or not. And, um, and I, I, yeah, and we needed to quickly come up with a way or a plan where we could continue our relationship and also, you know, do it in a way that it was going to be uh, practical, you know, uh, and it wasn't such an easy task to be mm -hmm. honest with you because I don't speak Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, Yuko doesn't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. So living in each other's countries at that time, it was too much commitment for any mm -hmm. of us, you know, so we needed to find a third option again. And, uh, and yeah, to answer your question, we ended up going each of us. Well, we had a brief adventure in New Zealand first. We live mm. there um, just to gain some time, to be honest, because mm. they gave us two weeks to leave Australia, which was very rushed. Mm -hmm. And um, they gave me pretty much two weeks and you could still had a little bit longer. So I went to New Zealand just to buy some time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then Yuko actually joined me in New Zealand, which was oh, the wow. first, I think that was the first signal 
like strong signal that we had that we were willing to put an effort into um, into keeping our relationship, you know, uh, working. Um, right. and, and then we lived in New Zealand for about three months uh, in a van, in a car, oh, and, you know. Two oh, months. wow. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't. Uh, I, I, I got to say, fantastic country, New Zealand. You know, great yeah, yeah. people, great country. Uh, it's just that our situation was very, um, a, how do you call it? A, uh, uncertain you know right, we, right. we didn't have working visas uh, we didn't have much money either and we were just trying to you know find a way to make it work then a few things happened in New Zealand we got um, we got robbed in New oh Zealand my. can you believe I'm it so we're sorry. probably like the 10th person that ever has been robbed in New Zealand but we did <laughs> <That's horrible. laughs> and that kind of forced us to go uh, each to his own country for yeah. for an extended amount of time and I think I think that was one of the first time that we spent a, a lot of months uh, separated, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, and it, it was really tough in terms of a relationship, you know. I, it, it sounds easier than what it is. Um, even though we love each, each other a lot, uh, distance, it's a very dangerous kind of... Uh, <laughs> kind of a thing in a relationship you know because you don't have the day by day and that that honestly start killing it mm -hmm. and also we had a 12 hours difference right the time Air difference must Japan. Have been. yeah mm -hmm. so it was also difficult to contact each other yeah, yeah. Our, our window of opportunity to actually skype was bleak like it was like i don't know a few hours a day yeah. you know and then a few hours 12 hours later um, but still, we, we were still, you know, uh, we decided that we were going to make it work. So we both uh, went full on into saving money and, and trying to relocate. And um, obviously during that process, uh, I went to Japan for the first time. I, 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 until that point, I never ever went to Japan. Uh, so it was, a, it was an awesome opportunity also to um, again going back to the culture to interiorize myself with where was Yuko coming from because everything I knew about Japan until that point was either based on you know uh, uh, movies or stuff like that or what Yuko told me but I never really like experienced it firsthand and and, mm -hmm. and I think that made me actually understand her way more you know mm -hmm. it, it, it was probably a very important time interesting and uh, I, <laughs> to listeners out there that have never traveled, although I'm sure some people definitely have, time zones matter. It's it's a big deal, especially when Japan is basically a day ahead of us or ahead of most of us, depending on which time zone you're in. So if it was 12, I don't know, 12 noon Pablo's time, it might have been like midnight for Yuko, right? And uh, that sometimes cars into lifestyles as well because if you had a long day at work and you're coming home and you just you know like you're falling asleep but you're trying to just wait online to like talk to your boyfriend or significant other or whomever right like i'm sure that there was instances of that that happened is that correct or it's so many times so many times <laughs> you know like uh i was supposed to you know call you call after work and that means, you know, my 6 p.m. It was her 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe I would I would be tired. I would get distracted. I forgot to do it. I fall asleep. And then when I wake up, it was her time to go to bed. So if we wouldn't, if we were not like a very thorough in our organization, it was very easy, you know, to mm -hmm. um, to actually not make it to to our you know proposed meetings and that was creating obviously frustrations too right like you start wondering uh oh why this person uh, wh why she couldn't make it like ah she, she she doesn't care or or the same you know she would think like ah he's he's uh he's not giving this like a priority and then um i, I think those details may look like very silly now you know with perspective but when you're dealing with a long-term relationship, it's uh, it's funny how the small things create so much frustration. You know, I <laughs> now again it seems funny now, but uh, it wasn't funny when it was 
happening. Right, we didn't know what was happening. When you yeah, were exactly. It was uh, it was actually very frustrating, and I think that that made both of us work even harder. Like it was like, no, we we gotta you know uh, move to the next stage, or that also um, there were probably many times that we both contemplated, well, maybe maybe it, this is kind of silly. You know, we're still young. Why pursue it? You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm glad we did. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, I think that's a huge testament to what you guys thought about each other and like the relationship as well. Because I yeah. don't know if people, I don't know if listeners actually understand how difficult a long distance relationship is until you've actually lived it, right? Um, I have a little limited amount of experience with this, um, but not at the level that you guys uh, had. Like when I was in college in my third year, uh, I met a girl before I went back for my third year, essentially. Um, so we kind of got together like pretty quickly because it was like the end of summer when we met each other. And I was long distance with her for probably about six months. So. Switzerland time. is probably about, I don't know, nine and a half out, nine hours or nine and a half hours uh, ahead of, of Vancouver time. Um, so yeah, it would be calls in, I don't know, like the morning, <laughs> I guess before I went to, to class and stuff like that. And then like the evening sometimes like 10 or 11 o'clock my time, which is like morning her time um, or afternoon her time, I should say. So I can only imagine if I multiplied that by like, like a thousand fold <laughs> it would be like what you guys experienced i agree i i think it, it's um you gotta you gotta go through it to really understand um the little details on why it's complicated because when you look at it from from a big perspective it doesn't sound like a, such a ch challenging thing you know you think well <laughs> if you guys love each other you just make it work but um it's because you don't have the the your daily routine your 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 um you know it it, it becomes kind of a kind of a task mm -hmm. you know and it's it, at the beginning it's easy because um because everything is very fresh but then it it's it really requires a commitment you know that mm -hmm. i think as you said it's a testament and i i'm not gonna lie i briefly had long-term relationships in the past because i used to work for the cruise ship industry mm -hmm. and they failed miserably like mm -hmm. I, I my record was awful in that regard <laughs> uh, you so, and me both sir and yeah both. no i couldn't it's uh so yeah i think um i think that's probably um uh, a testament of our our mutual interest and um and yeah my if I can give an advice to, to any listener, um, try to minimize it as much as you can, you yeah. know, like don't, don't count on a, on a year of long-term relationship, do whatever you can to make it as short as possible. Cause otherwise like the, the chances of not working increase considerably, you know, like I think honestly, I think that the last, if we wouldn't have to be separated for another six months, I don't think we would have had the patience. Um, you know, uh, that's that's at least how I see it. How long? Do you mind me asking how long you guys were separated for? It was like eight. What was it? it was uh, total or? Uh, just I guess during that first period after New Zealand, the when you guys had to go home. was six months. Yeah, six months. Okay, six, six months. months. Then I went to see her. I came back, and we spent another probably four months. Uh, so totally oh, it was wow. like almost a year almost a but year. um but yeah but i uh i'm very glad that we had a brief period there a few mm -hmm. weeks where we saw each other because uh it, it was necessary to be honest and uh it was a, a financially a very difficult decision because we were saving to move right to move um, somewhere else right move, yeah, uh, to be here actually to vancouver yeah and i and i ate a chunk of those savings just going to go to see her but right. um completely worth it <laughs> yeah i can imagine that would have been uh, super hard for you guys yeah that's wow that's a lot i um you know i look at <laughs> maybe this is the cynical side of me but sometimes when people ask me my advice on long distance relationships or hey i met someone on vacation but they live halfway across the world usually i recommend to them like don't do it <laughs> unless you really like like this person because I don't know if you actually know what you're in 
in for, right? Like until you actually experience that. Like relationships are hard enough as it is if you lived in the same household as someone. You can imagine putting 3,000 miles of distance, you know, in between you two and how difficult that might be, right? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I had friends that asked me, um, hey man, uh, what do you think? And this is gonna sound terrible, but my advice is always like, man, like chances are that it's probably not gonna work. Like give it a go, but don't, uh, don't punish yourself if it doesn't work. Cause it's like, chances are very slim. Um, Having said that, I do know more cases, obviously, of uh, long-term relationships that did work, but uh, but I guess you only remember the one that worked. <laughs> yeah, know? that's the that's the like, funny thing. Huh? No one reports the the failures; they always report so, the successes, right? Exactly. So uh, I, I sustain my advice: is just limited uh, mm -hmm. as much as you can. You know, don't, don't rely on it as a good as a good technique or, or a good way. You know, it's it's, it's not a doesn't really work very well after especially after a certain amount of time um right. we were both lucky that we were very focused on work you know like none of us was like partying or anything when you know where we would be exposed to kind of like you know other other temptations or, or whatever you know like it was we were very laser focused during that period and, and that helped obviously you know that's a lot of discipline as well, right? Um, mm. And and I, I don't think that listeners probably understand that because like you, everyone has temptations all around them, right? Like you could oh, literally yeah. walk outside like to the bar across the street and there would be temptations there. So I think removing yourself from the equation uh, that way is, is really important to stay committed to your partner um in so. in any form whether or not that is long distance relationships or like you guys are literally living in like the same household so um yeah that's a that's amazing um i agree i, I agree. wanted to ask you um kind of during that lull period when you guys were kind of in your respective you know places in, in chile and in, in japan um did your siblings or your family members ever talk to you guys about the relationship were they ever like you know, you go like, I know you like this guy, but you know, he's halfway across the world or, you know, Pablo for you the same, like, did your sisters tell you anything or anything like that? Um, I think in my case, they were very respectful of my feelings. So mm -hmm. I never received any sort of pressure in regards to like, not, you know, continue with what I had planned. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, I would say my, uh, my family, being my mom and my brothers they were very encouraging you know mm -hmm. in the sense like you know they wanted me to pursue my my uh my goals mm -hmm. but having said that obviously indirectly i knew that their desire really was for me obviously to stay right um, right like th they would never do anything they would never say anything but mm -hmm. i know for for obvious reasons that uh yeah they they were in a way kind of like a uh, to be honest it, it surprised me that um our families love us uh, so much you know I, yeah. I, I mean like yuko's family loved me very much and my family loved yuko very much because technically we are both responsible for you know <laughs> us being away <laughs> from them so it's like i should be the enemy and, yeah. and and same for yuko and it's completely the opposite you know um i think i, I don't know if your parents ever tried to convince you to stay in japan and not come to canada but not that i know of i, I don't really know did they no really um when i just uh, talk about pablo to my mom only mm -hmm. to mom for the first time when i was in australia my mom was shocked because I went there just for learning English. Right. So like, oh no, it's not, she's, he's not Japanese. Like I'm very close to my mom. So mm -hmm. he was, she was shocked. But then after New Zealand, as Pablo explained to you, we got robbed. And then I was traumatized, traumatized mm -hmm. from that. And then when I back to Japan, I was like really like depressed. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if I should go back to with Pab to be with Pablo. Mm -hmm. And then my mom actually told me, you know, I think he, you look very happy to be with him. Mm -hmm. So 
why don't you try again? Why don't you try meeting to meet him again? And uh, that was like a really push me to try again. So my mom always liked Pablo and my dad always, every time I have boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, he was very cold, you know, like a, like pretend a cool father. Mm -hmm. But to Pablo, he's always nice, even though he doesn't speak any English. Mm -hmm. I tried to use a hand gesture and then to be nice and help it all, all the time and very nice. And um, all my sisters, I have older sister and younger sister mm -hmm. as, as well. They are very nice to Pablo. They, they really love loved him. Yeah, for me, it was, a, it was a surprise. Like the first time I met Yuko's parents was actually in Australia because they, they visited her. Oh, wow. And Yuko did a very thorough job in explaining me, you know, that her dad was uh, this very strict Japanese old school man that was probably going to be very very you know dry with me so i was prepared for it i was like okay i'm gonna face uh you know uh, the, the classic kind of uh <laughs> a stereotype you know that you would think and when i met him um it's like tall you know serious japanese men with with big eyebrows that that <laughs> kind of looks like intimidating to be mm -hmm. honest and um, for some reason that I cannot really explain, it, he was a sweetheart with me. You know, like we we kind of connected on a very uh, strange level because I don't speak Japanese and he doesn't speak English. And maybe that's why, you know, he liked me because <laughs> there's no need to, you know, uh, to, to get into details. We, we have to judge each other on our actions. There, there's not much really that we can bullshit each other, you know, because... Uh, there's not that possibility um, but I consider myself really lucky that that's something that actually is not that common um, mm -hmm. I think in interracial relationships uh, it's very common that um, families are not very fun of um, of this situation you know mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably the luckiest thing in our relationship is that we got full support from both of our families which is again I don't think is that common especially um, with uh, with Asian cultures and with South American cultures too that are very much of a clan you know mm -hmm. like uh, they, they are not very fond of um, of letting people go mm -hmm. so yeah I can imagine they'd probably be very protective uh, under normal very. circumstances yeah I think that's great that they were so open about um, you know Pablo and vice versa of, of Yuko my mom is the same she, yeah. she was also like she never liked my girlfriends in the past <laughs> ever like uh yeah. and, and she was quite honest with me about it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know uh, obviously respectful but but honest and mm -hmm. and yuko i don't know she worked her magic and, and my mom loved her <laughs> from day one. Oh, that's a that's great um uh, i want to ask you both about i guess the next part of your phase your lives where you moved to Vancouver right yeah. why did you guys decide on on Vancouver and what was that like so um one of my housemates in Australia was from Vancouver so that's okay. uh, he he spoke very good about Vancouver mm -hmm. you know and when we were choosing a, a place you know to apply for a working visa and kind of restart again mm -hmm. um they were pretty much I was already older than, oh, no, I was, I think I was 20, maybe I was 30 or, or 29 or something. And uh, working visas, when you're over 30, your chances kind of decrease considerably. Uh, so our options were like uh, Germany or Canada. Mm -hmm. And I think we chose Vancouver mostly because of this housemate and because mm -hmm. we had a very good opinion about Canada in general. Mm -hmm and um it's a beautiful city safe it kind of like had all the checks I, I, we honestly i think it was a great opportunity and uh, that was uh, we wanted a place where where we could speak english too because mm -hmm. our relationship is in english you know mm -hmm. and uh we didn't feel like learning another language at that point mm -hmm. it was it was a bit too much um so yeah like canada sounded like like a really good place and we were lucky enough that we both got our work and holidays visa 
Um, actually, fa funny thing, when they told me that I was going to get it, I bought a flight and I went to Japan to pick up Yuko, so we come here together. <laughs> and it ended up being delayed, so I ended up spending like three months in Japan without being able to work. And uh, in my parents' place, in her parents' place, <laughs> <For three months. laughs> and it was it was amazing, but at the same time, it, it was so challenging because I didn't have much money. You know, right. I saved a little bit of money during that year that I spent in Chile to actually settle here in Vancouver and, and try to. And I was eating that budget, you know, when I was in Japan slowly, obviously, but um, that that was also already creating some sort of frustration, mm -hmm. but um. We chose Vancouver because of our friends. Mm. Okay. We didn't know anything about Vancouver. We both of us we'd never been here before. Oh, so you never visited here like prior no. to that, no. basically. No, not even Canada. Well, Halifax, but no, not Vancouver. Okay, uh, that's <laughs> that's actually pretty amazing. Uh, oh. You guys are really brave for going to. Australia and then New Zealand and then back home and then <laughs> moving halfway across the world again to, to Vancouver to kind of settle down and um, Wow, that's something else. You guys should be really proud of yourselves. I am. We try hard. Humbly. <laughs> the thing is like once you've done it once you kind of realize that you know uh, You can do it again. You can do it. Not anywhere, forever. Yeah. Like there, there is limit there, it, every time you do it, it, it has a price um, mm -hmm. emotionally and everything. But um, starting from scratch has his um, ha has a lot of appealing to, you know, there, there mm -hmm. is a, there is a certain attractive thing in uh, being a nobody, you know, to land in a place where you're literally like you have you don't have a network. You, you, you have all, all all you have is yourself. And in this case, obviously, Yuko. Um, and I think that's appealing. And I think that once you've done it, once you realize that um, you can do it again, I I don't want to necessarily do it again, <laughs> but if I have to, I'll do it again. And and I'm sure that Yuko might feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that we live here and we started everything from scratch, mm -hmm. I, I feel that I can go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And do it again, yeah. Yeah, okay. do it again. To be fair, mm -hmm. Canada, is not the hardest place to establish right. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is a society that things work here. You know, yeah. um, there is a lot of opportunity in Canada. So we were very lucky to mm -hmm. to actually have the opportunity to to get here, and um, they receive us, you know, open arms. Um, all we needed to do really was to put an effort to um, to do jobs, maybe that at the beginning, you know, they didn't look very sexy at all, and yeah. Um, <laughs> but but you just go through it, you know, and uh, and you you don't stop. You you just have to continue moving forward. I think when you um, when you restart, you know that that's the key. It's just just not a never feel sorry for yourself because that's an exercise that is not really gonna allow you to move much. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, I think that's that's the key. For listeners that uh, obviously you guys don't know because you probably never met Pablo, but uh, for listeners back home, um, Pablo and, and Yuko deserve all the success that's coming to them because they've both done respective jobs that uh, from, you know, washing dishes and oh, yeah. these kind of things uh, and moved themselves up. And now they have a place, they have a car, they have an instant pot, <laughs> <laughs> they have a couple electric scooters. So, uh, you know, if you guys are proud of yourselves, you should be. I'm definitely proud of you guys for, for what you guys have achieved. It's it's really the yeah. quote-unquote immigrant story, if you will. And um, obviously Canada plays a part in this. It's a very multicultural kind of community yeah. and system that's in place to, to welcome people to the country. But it takes two, right? Like you guys also have to want to sacrifice a lot to, you know, move away from your families to a foreign place that you've never been in, learn the systems here, the customs, the cultures, and also work hard, like be a dishwasher, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, to, yeah, like stuff like that. Nothing is guaranteed, even in Canada, you know, like I think that me being from South America, from a relatively, you know, small country, we have this sometimes this kind of idea that oh, Canada or Australia, you just go there and, and just everything it's given to you. Mm -hmm. And in a way, a lot of things are, you know, um, are there. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of social kind of uh, I don't know health and all that. Mm -hmm. 
but you still have to you know work really hard like it's do, not yeah. it's not a holiday you know like it, the opportunities are there if you're willing to if you're willing to go for them mm -hmm. you know they're, they're not just given um but yeah i i think that um i think we've been very lucky you know just mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes i don't realize and it takes instances like this one where you honestly review your whole you know the last 10 years of your life to realize how lucky um we've been and how grateful we should be because uh like there's so many things that i told you today that are completely out of our control you know right. like i and and that's just pure luck or destiny or mm -hmm. serendipity as you call it mm -hmm. but um but, but being thankful for it because um it's it's been a crazy journey you know and uh, th there's <laughs> more to come <laughs> it is and yeah you're right there's more to come but it's like something that you can write in kind of like a storybook uh, <laughs> like if you guys ever decide to have kids you can tell your kids that uh, you know one day about, we'll show them the about podcast. how mom and dad met right so i think that's really cool man uh, i think a lot of people uh whoever's listening to this at home can aspire to to those things and understand that uh you know they can do it too right i think so that's, that's anybody man like if, anyway, if, a, you know. if a random Chilean and, uh, and a beautifully but random Japanese girl could do it, um, anybody can. And like, honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of uh, just pushing. And also sometimes things don't work and it's okay mm -hmm. too, you know, like, like, I don't know. Part of the experience, some of the right? Plans, some of the plans, many of the plans that we have made mm -hmm. have failed and mm -hmm. it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. You know, part of the adventure part of the part journey. of it completely part of it man completely part of it and then with distance you kind of make peace with it too you know mm -hmm. um so that's that's probably how we have managed to like, you know always kind of push a little bit forward so you guys got married five years ago is that correct no we got married in 2018 so that's uh okay so three, three, three years okay. ago right almost yeah. almost four years ago yeah, we got married here in Canada and then in Japan, both, both countries. Um, nice. Uh, listeners back home, I uh, <laughs> wasn't, I didn't know Pablo and Yuko back then, uh, but the pictures that were shown to me, it was a beautiful wedding, uh, both oh, here and and in in, uh, in Japan. Uh, you guys had a traditional Japanese wedding, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We wanted to honor um, Yuko was very interested in honoring her own, you know, okay. cultural background. And I was the happiest, you know, how can I, <laughs> how can I not want that? Um, it's a millinery kind of culture and the opportunity to be part of a, of a traditional Japanese ritual for me was uh, it, magical, literally, you know, it I'm, I'm going to share the photos with you, Jeff, like, uh, so, so you can, uh, you can show some of them, but like, it was, it was crazy. It was, um, I, I, I gotta admit, I didn't know what i was saying because i just needed to say things uh, in japanese obviously mm -hmm. and, and yuko explaining what they mean but i technically you know i just let myself float into the whole situation but um uh, it, that, that was that was definitely probably one of the happiest days of my life for sure oh yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah uh it was really cool i mean like i pablo rented a, a traditional um kimono kimono um and i think i don't yuko did you rent yours or did you purchase yours i i rented <laughs> because it's very expensive <laughs> yeah i can imagine it looked it's very so expensive, expensive. <laughs> yeah I wish, like, I wish. and also like honestly like how many instances you're gonna have to wear it yeah that's... <laughs> like a traditional but um it was funny like yuko had such an elaborated hairstyle that we rented a car that had like a roof that opens mm -hmm. like this so she could get in the car that, like <laughs> oh, really really it was uh no oh, it, it, it was crazy man it, it was it was very humble like mm -hmm. i don't think it it wasn't like a huge wedding or a very expensive one either mm -hmm. like it was uh honestly pretty uh modest but at the same time it was uh i don't know like i, I personally never seen something like that before I think um, yeah it was super cool and you guys had the wedding uh, like banquet like in a traditional like you were showing me pictures of yeah. like the oldest it was the oldest restaurant in 
in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. In Kyoto, what, yeah. If it's not the oldest, it's definitely one of the oldest. But okay. uh, it's funny, that restaurant is older than my country. <laughs> uh, literally <laughs> which is which was a little bit shocking um but um yeah now we we had we couldn't even taste the food unfortunately oh. um the way that the weddings are structured in japan the um the, the wedding couple is so busy you know that yeah. we literally just watch everybody you know enjoy it but that was that was already enjoyable um then we had some food. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they set you aside something so that you guys can um, yeah. indulge a little yeah. bit later. Yeah. I, no. I know that uh, I've been to quite a few weddings. I know that that's kind of the MO. So usually the banquet manager or uh, if you have a wedding planner or something like that will help you set aside some meals because you're so busy like doing the games and like doing the speeches and like you know all these kind of things like toasting like the different tables at least like a western quote unquote western style wedding um that you just don't get a chance to almost sit down until maybe like the end of the night right um, yeah i think uh I actually uh, we ended up going to eat yakitori chicken i think no I think oh, we... wow. After the wedding, which is like honestly, like almost like street food, you know, it's like yeah, it's pieces, the best, it's the best street food. <laughs> it's fantastic, but it was like yeah. totally not, you know, uh, wedding kind wedding of wedding style. Uh, yeah, yeah, like but, fine um, dining or anything like that. We yeah. were hungry, and and it was already time to kind of like relax a little bit, get out of the protocol. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yakitori, yakitori was uh, for us our wedding food. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, no, it was great, like to be able to. My mom was there and, and to expose also members of my family, um, mm -hmm. auntie, mom, to, uh, to, to Yuko's cult culture was um, incredibly special. I think that was the first time, actually, that was the first time that our parents met oh, during wow. our wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they never met before, you know, in person. And uh, they were, we were all so nervous. I think that was probably yeah. the, the point where we were most nervous because... Um, you know language barriers cultural barriers mm -hmm. the stress of the wedding everything yeah. piling up in this and we all put such an effort to make it nice to make it you know something that it was incredibly easy like i wish somebody could have told me like hey man relax it's gonna be super easy mm -hmm. um, things are gonna go well and it, it was a beautiful experience you know uh, yuko's parents took us everywhere you know literally oh, like wow they took us to so many places ah we it was um i think that was for me kind of the, the moment where i realized fine you know everything everything is fine everything is really fine you know if mm -hmm. our families get along we get along culturally speaking also and i was able to show my mom um, members of my family you know the, a country that i really admire that was uh, japan you know mm -hmm. so that's amazing uh, it was great. That's like a once in a lifetime, like you 100%. know. Hundred percent. How no, many man, times it's... has that ever happened to anyone? You know what it's... I mean? Like, but... yeah, I mean, uh, I I don't think I'll be able to bring family members on on, on that scale mm -hmm. anywhere. You know, right. again. So like, we embrace the moment a lot. Um, same when Yuko visited Chile. You know, we it was it was a magical moment too. You know. Mm -hmm. Very different culture. <laughs> very, very different. Oh, very God. different society. Yeah. Very different. I mean, it yeah, is, everything. It's, it's, it's Everybody, not a... just, I just met them for the first time, but I'm like, you can't give me a kiss and a hug. And like, oh, okay, you're going to give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, man, it was funny. I was able to show Yuko, you know, um, chili and sushi which is like <laughs> kind of insulting no <laughs> pablo always has stories about chile and sushi <laughs> oh man like yeah one day uh, that's that's enough for a full episode honestly because like yeah it's like the things they do there. it's like gro it's like yeah gas station sushi i guess maybe a little oh, bit oh no it's, it's creative it's very creative man like they wrap you know i've seen sushi places in chile selling sausages wrapped in rice and calling <laughs> sushi you know cut in no it's it's very yeah. <laughs> non-traditional but non hopefully very delicious no. no no yeah yeah absolutely delicious mm -hmm. did you like it admit it 
<laughs> it was not too bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Acceptable. Delicious. I guess um, last question for you guys um, as we wrap up some of this podcast here. Uh, what what's next in store for you guys? I know obviously you're going away to Japan, you know, this Christmas and everything. Uh, but you guys have had some conversations about, you know, maybe one day we'll set up a cafe in Japan. Maybe that would be cool. You know, what's next for you guys? I think that. Um... We don't even know to start with. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's all very kind of uh, in the air yet. But um, I think the next step is to finalize our immigration process in Canada. You know, I um, I am looking forward to become a Canadian citizen, and that's going to take some time, obviously. So that's um, th that would be probably the first big next big step uh, in our lives, and. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, opening the cafe in Japan is definitely a plan that we've been carrying for years. Um, it's still, I think, probably, probably buying a place. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. the only thing that we feel that um, that is missing, and mm -hmm. it's um, it's uh, again, it's topic for another full episode. But uh, in Vancouver, it's very, very, very mm -hmm. inaccessible. Um, the prices here. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately so probably I think the next step is Japan I think we're gonna move there uh, at some point you know uh, but again it, it's it, there's so many things we need to do early I need to learn the language to start mm -hmm. with you know um, we need to sort out you know okay we moved to Japan where to do what mm -hmm. uh, can I can I continue the job that I have you know mm -hmm. from there if not, then what we're gonna do? Mm -hmm. So at the moment, we're kind of liking also being settled. Like it, it mm -hmm. feels good to to be able to call a place home. You know, to like it, to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. and that's something that we are embracing. Really, um, we're we're not looking forward to um, to generate changes that are not completely necessary. But um, but yeah, I think those are the next steps. You know, like to. Um, to complete our immigration here in Canada to the level where we're gonna get, we want to get, mm -hmm. and then probably analyze um, how to migrate to Japan without having to start from zero again. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're trying to, since we have time and, and it's not like a rush decision, mm -hmm. we're trying to make it in a way where we don't, where maybe we can s skip some of those initial awkward steps, you know, like, mm -hmm. like getting jobs that are not you know, uh, in line with what we've been doing or stuff like that. But um, more than anything, it's also to enjoy the uh, the moment. You know, um, sometimes when you when you move to another country, you get very fixated on what's next, mm -hmm. and um, and it's also I feel very important to enjoy. You know, just just the now, mm -hmm. the moment that you're living right now, because it's beautiful. It, it's great, and I'm very thankful for where I am right now that's awesome yeah if you did move back to japan were you guys thinking about possibly setting in settling in kyoto because obviously you guys folks are from most there, likely or... yeah, yeah. Kyoto? okay most Let's likely see. yeah it would be if it's not in kyoto itself it would be in the surroundings but um that's our favorite part of japan and um and it's also where her parents live which is mm -hmm. uh, another very important um aspect of that decision mm -hmm because we really want to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it would be in Kyoto. And uh, look, if we ever have a cafe in Japan, um, your listeners and yourself are going to be the first ones <laughs> we'll to know. We'll promote it. <laughs> we'll <laughs> tell everyone to go. We're going to have to run a little ad, you know, like yeah. some, some <laughs> I'm going to ask you for help there. But um, at the moment, uh, I think we're just going to stay where we are and continue, you know, um, Continue maybe improving in the details, you know, try to um, to keep the, the big changes on hold for a moment. I think that's so cool. That's the dream. Uh, having a little cake shop or something like that in, in Japan or something like that. And just, I don't know. That, I, I think that, amazing, that's the right? life. Like if I could have that life. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. And I think that's one thing that's important. We could do a whole episode of that, Pablo. But, um, and, and Yuko, like listeners at home, I think now this day and age, 
is the most unique opportunities for everyone that's in the workforce because you can literally just like make a skill and like run with it and produce that content anywhere in the world right like if you were a you know traveling nomad that writes blogs you could travel from country to country month to month if you wanted to right like right now we're releasing a podcast obviously we don't have that many followers uh currently but like if you were to uh really make this a full-time gig and everything like that like you could produce youtube content really from anywhere or podcast content from anywhere in the world um so it's an unprecedented time for i think the workforce which is i think is a really cool thing yeah 100 percent. i think uh obviously driven by you know the inconvenience of um of the latest pandemic i think we can make something positive out of it is that we have also questioned many of uh many of the things that were unquestionable before you know like can i really work remotely can i really you know have a, a more nomad lifestyle and i think the answer is yes i i completely agree with you jeff i think that um unprecedented times in that regard you know you you can literally uh, i could be doing this from from any country you mm -hmm. know being part of, of of this show of this podcast and that is um that's unique and and i think that it's a, it's an opportunity to be very creative in how you want to you know structure your life if you have the chance to be creative with that you know that's amazing um before we wrap up this podcast is there anything that you guys wanted to add before i make some closing remarks here let me give it a let me give that a thought i'm gonna take five seconds because i have no problem so much <laughs> you take your time <laughs> you go you think about it as well <laughs> um, yeah no look uh, overall like just embrace the differences you know mm -hmm. like really um i have realized that like th there is a lot of enjoyment in uh in being in in giving you know not giving in the sense of giving something to somebody in in, in giving in giving up you know in, in kind of like you know just uh, allow yourself to be wrong or to mm -hmm. um or to change because it's um i think it's it's the fuel of um of new experiences you know mm -hmm. and um yeah that, that would be my, my my only advice especially in regards to relationships is like uh allow yourself to be changed by the person that you're with you know because um it's inevitable and um it's actually the way it works in my opinion you know like you're gonna change the person that's with you and that person is also gonna change you mm. and uh, just embrace that because it's uh I, I i think it's the key i think it's really hard to meet somebody like perfect mm -hmm. so like little by little you need to get to know the person and uh, you need to also change not completely but like respect and help each other and also always appreciate it thank you like just uh, washing dishes i also tell pablo thank you for washing pablo mm -hmm. also tell me like thank you for doing this like i uh, always like um support yeah support yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i i i agree i agree with that you know it's like uh <laughs> there is no perfect person mm -hmm. um out there mm -hmm. you know like they they're it's something that you build and it takes a lot of frustration and effort and just just give it a go give it a go that's my you my never know until you try right yeah lame advice maybe but like my, honestly like just give it a go like but uh, it's so true too I think. <laughs> yeah like yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're waiting for the perfect person like uh, it's, it's it just won't happen right it doesn't exist it, i i used to be very jealous uh personally like secretly mm -hmm. obviously of um of couples in the mm -hmm. past because I, I always thought that there was absolutely no chance that i was going to have a successful relationship and um and i think that uh it, it was just fear and mm -hmm. um yeah that's uh that, that's how i felt but I, I remember also seeing couples in the past and thinking like ah oh, you know i i'm happy for them but at the same time feeling very frustrated about it like thinking like uh oh i'll never get that you know that's never gonna happen to me 
mm-hmm. or uh, and um, yeah, I, I I have no idea why, but it, it does happen and it can happen to anybody, um, really. There's nothing special, um, I think, about the fact that it happens. Um, but <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Yuko and Pablo, uh, I'd love to continue talking to you guys. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to wrap up the podcast. I want to thank oh. you both for obviously sitting down with me uh, and taking the time to kind of share your story and inspiring maybe other people that are listening to this um, about what they can achieve, honestly, if they put their minds to it and, and sacrifice and, and compromise. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, thank you, thank Jeffrey. Thank you for giving it's, us um, this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoy it. And um, yeah, thank you. My pleasure. So thanks so much for watching everyone or listening at home. Uh, if you're listening to, to this podcast, uh, please, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can like, comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell for any future uh, podcast or any videos. We post podcasts every Wednesday, uh, just to let you guys know. Uh, you can find us in the description links below where you can download our podcast. We're on all the major platforms, uh, Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff. So you can find us there. You can download us on your car rides to and from work um, for a good listen. Uh, next week, um, we will have another guest um, that will be talking about a different topic. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys got something out of this uh, session. And I really appreciate everyone participating today on uh, everything that uh, we've had to offer. So this is TRG out and we will see you next week. Thank you.